All right, I'm uh, Robert Johnson. Uh, I work at Starfire Optical Range. We've been doing adaptive optics here, at least beacon adaptive optics here for about 35 years. So um, my talk today is about adaptive gain control. Um, uh, I'll go to the first slide here. Here we go, okay. Uh, so this is a previous work that we reported at, at SBIE in 2018 and AO3LT uh, last year. Um, it's uh, based on work of two of my colleagues, uh, Dennis Montera and Mike Flanagan. The references are there. Uh, and, um, feel free to contact us if you have any questions about this. Um, so uh, what is our motivation? Um, as you know, the, the optimum closed loop gain changes with uh, varying conditions. So our approach to solving this is a learning algorithm that adjusts for the gain in real time. And we've shown that we've had improved uh, tilt and higher order performance uh, by looking at the RMS phase error as reported by the wavefront sensor. And we've currently implemented this for um, tilt and we've been using that for about three years now. And we do it for higher order correction as well, uh, but we apply the same gain to all sub apertures. In the future, we'd like to uh, apply unique gain for each sub aperture. So that's the overview. Um, let's see. Okay. So, what's our motivation again to review um, the optimum closed loop gain? As you understand, changes varying under varying conditions. Um, it depends on the angular extent of the object or the laser beacon, and you know we call that sensitivity. And this little uh, image on the right hand side there, you can see. I don't know if you can see my mouse. I can't even see my mouse. But you know, those are two spots with the same gradient, uh, the same displacement, but because of the size of the spot, you know, it's a quad cell. Because of the size of the spot, um, you, you get a different gradient, although it's the same displacement. Um, so that's uh, one thing that affects it. And for us, you know, we look at satellites quite a bit, Earth orbiting satellites. So um, those have complex structures that change uh, very quickly as the satellite moves across the sky. So this is something we have to adjust for very quickly. Um, um, and, but it, it also depends on, uh, say if you change altitudes with your laser beacon. Um, also it depends on the signal to noise ratio of the measurement that you're making and the strength and spectrum of the disturb disturbance. You know, our telescopes, because we move them very quickly across the sky up to 10 degrees per second, they vibrate a little bit. And so that creates a disturbance that we have to adjust for in real time. In the past, uh, the AO operator, the adaptive optics operator would have to manually adjust this gain. And if they set it too low, then we don't get the bandwidth that we deserve. But if it's set too high, then the loop becomes unstable. Um, and it, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't adapt for varying uh, conditions, like I said, for satellites. Um, um, and, and plus the, the AO operator, they would pick the same value for X and Y tilt although because of the elongation of the object, you might have a different gain in each axis. And also uh, they apply the same for all sub apertures. Um, so what is our approach? Um, on the left here, you see a, a typical neural net. You guys are all familiar with this, where you have your inputs on the bottom, weights, uh, the net, and then um, your outputs. So we've simplified this to a very simple single neuron neural net where, um, where we have uh, our input, which is our mirror command. It could either be our X or Y tilt for a tilt mirror or an actuator uh, command. Uh, we apply a weight to that, but we call gain. And we look at the output. So the output for a tilt mirror is how much did the tilt change on our tilt sensor? Um, and similarly, we, we do Shaq Hartman AO right now. And um, for us, the output in this case would be the displacement, um, you know, uh, the, the gradients that we observe uh, on, our, on our wavefront sensor. So uh, the equation there is shown on the bottom. Um, X is the, the mirror command. Um, you have to have a term in here for latency. I can't see, I can't point. All right, so you have to have a term in there for latency because the, the wavefront sensor measurement is uh, lags the mirror command that you gave it, right? Uh, same thing for the tilt system. Um, and the, the output that you look at is the measured residual error. 
that uh, the value there uh, eta is the um, learning rate. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And um, the, of course the output of this equation is gain. It's just a simple linear equation. So um, here's some of our results. So um, this is for, uh, the, uh, for wavefront sensing, applying a gain. Uh, on the left there, we show that we started, arbitrarily started the, the controller gain at a very high value and it quickly reaches a steady state. Um, the update rate there uh, for that one is about uh, one per second. So in about 20 seconds, it, it achieves an optimum state. Um, uh, same thing, uh, a steady state rather. And on the right there, I think the update rate there was about once every two seconds. Uh, so we started an arbitrary low value and, and, and within uh, 20 seconds, it, it reached uh, the optimum value. So um, here is um, some results on the sky. So um, what we're showing there in each plot is the gain on the x-axis and the RMS phase is measured by the wavefront sensor in arbitrary units. And so what we did, the blue curve shows just uh, automatically for one minute at a time, changing the gain to different values. And then we let the, the, we turned on the learning system and it picked the gain and that is what's shown in red. And you can see it, it chooses the value that minimizes the arbitrary, the, um, the uh, RMS phase. And uh, this, the top row is uh, one night and the bottom row is another night. We did this many times each night, but this is just looking at different conditions. Um, and you can see that it picks different values for the gain depending on conditions. Um, so uh, it works pretty well. So um, wh what, are, what are some of the things that we learned in doing this? Um, uh, let's see, uh, we, we found out very quickly that we need a different learning rate for each wavefront sensor frame rate or tilt sensor frame rate. Um, and we, we adjust it such that the, uh, the learning rate, such that the gain, uh, the change in gain per frame is about 10 to the minus five or 10 to the minus four. Um, if, it's, if it's too too low, if we send it too low, like 10 to the minus six, um, then it doesn't converge very quickly. But if it's too high, then we get this oscillatory behavior where it's trying to, it's looking at noise essentially and trying to adjust the gain that way. Um, one thing we also found was that if an actuator like a tilt mirror or something like that is uh, near its limit of throw, then uh, uh, the system, if we just let it go, would turn the gain up really high and uh, that's really bad. So we learned that when the actuator is near the uh, maximum of its throw, either for the DM or the tilt mirror, that we limit that to about 90% of the throw. So we turn off the learning there. Um, I mentioned this earlier, we have to account for the latency and the latency on our tilt system is different than the late latency on our uh, high order wavefront sensor. So uh, we typically set that to uh, a frame offset or, of two or four. So this is to account for the latency uh, between the mirror commands and the observed uh, uh, change, you know, the Y, the change in the, in the mirror position. Um, so we, like I said, we've implemented this for tilt and high order control, but right now we have the same um, command, uh, the same gain command for all of our sub apertures, but as you know, um, you can, might get different beacon elongation for uh, um, different sub apertures, especially the ones that are farther away from the, the launch. We are side launched on our telescope. And so um, we plan to implement this in the coming year so that we have a different gain for each sub aperture. Um, we, to do that, as we mentioned before, I think it was talked about here, you need to update your RTC. So we're doing that. We're building our new RTC and it's gonna be installed on the system that Mala Mateen briefed yesterday. So we're gonna try this out on a one meter to start with. Um, the one meter system that Mala was talking about yesterday is kind of gonna be our test bed so that we can test these ideas out before deploying them to our larger telescopes. Um, so that's all I had. I don't know if there's any questions. Thank you very much. Yes, there are some of them. Uh, one of them, uh, at least, uh, from uh, Miskel Edouard. Uh, would a small known perturbation sent to the DM allow to estimate the gain more efficiently? You could detect the signal you send and allow to estimate the pulse of apertures gain. 
Um, let me, I didn't follow that, I'm sorry. So uh, the, the question is... Uh, uh, well, no, doing. Yeah. So uh, would a small non perturbation yeah. to the DM allow to estimate the gain more efficiently? Um, yeah, I think it could. I think it could, but um, I'd just be worried that the perturbation might, you know, uh, destroy what we're trying to measure, uh, you know, our correction. I guess if it's a very small perturbation. Um, yes. I think it all depends on sensitivity. If we have a highly sensitive uh, system, say looking uh, for NGS looking at a star, I think that'd be fine. But um, if, if it's looking at a beacon and, you know, our seeing is really bad, like uh -huh. typical seeing is maybe three to five centimeters uh, are not. So uh -huh. it even affects the size of our beacon on the uplink. So without uplink correction, I think it might be problematic. I mean, it might be hard to see that perturbation. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. Uh, so we can move to the next speaker. All right, thank uh, you, everybody. I, we really appreciate uh, give, being given the opportunity to present here. So thank you. Thank you.